This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. And appreciate being on top of the ground and the ground not being on top of you as often as you can because life is so beautiful. Today marks one year since a former student opened fire at a school in South St. Louis, killing 15-year-old Alexandria Bell and teacher Jean Kushka. Tonight, we are hearing from a survivor of the shooting. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Police responded to the shooting within minutes, killing the suspect and recent grad, 19-year-old Orlando Harris. Central Visual and Performing Arts Center canceled classes today so the community can focus on healing and remembering the victims. There have been a lot of changes in the last year. New video surveillance, alarms, locks, specialty doors, and windows. There are also counselors on site to help students and staff, along with a new principal and superintendent. There's no playbook. There's no guidebook for this. Um, and there's no way around it. You have to just kind of move through it um, as well. And so we're just moving through it together. It's a day that impacted people across St. Louis, but for the survivors, the ones who heard the gunshots and screams, their lives will never be the same. Five in your sides, Mercedes McKay shares the story of a former student who is using his pain to appreciate every single moment of life gives him. We've been through the storm. It's a voice the St. Louis community got used to hearing. Hallelujah. Raekwon Strickland used his God-given talent to share the pain him and his classmates were feeling. It was such a struggle to even just read that that was my reality. For Strickland, the morning of October 24th, 2022 started with a rush of overwhelming thoughts. As I walked onto campus, everything was so different. The energy, the quietness, it seemed so surreal. Little did the high school senior know, just hours later, a gunman would find his way into these hallways. I remember hearing gunfire and students in the classes above me jumping out of the windows to safety. One voice screamed, he shot my teacher. In a matter of minutes, Central Visual and Performing Arts High School became the latest target of a school shooting. So many people don't realize how Life can truly flash before your eyes. Something we all witnessed after this shooting was the resiliency of this CVPA community. It was something that Strickland says didn't shock him. No one can ever say we were weak or we were ever defeated. One year later, a freshman in college states away. Strickland still sits at his piano singing his same song. We've been through the storm but with a greater appreciation for each new day. It helped me to realize that you cannot take life for granted. Mercedes McKay, five on your side. And we have extensive coverage about the investigation into the shooting that is still going on today. You can also read survivor stories and a counselor's advice to talking to your kids about these tragedies. All of that is on KSDK.com and we'll also have more tonight at 6 and 10. In the last few hours, we learned a St. Louis Cardinals employee has been fired for using inappropriate language on a business call. Multiple sources tell Five on Your Side the employee was Cardinals Director of Security, Phil Melcher. The Cardinals did not say what he said, just that the language was, quote, inappropriate and hurtful. He was fired on Friday, the same day of that business call. Now to a developing story in Creve Coeur. The city's plan to redevelop the old Bear campus is moving forward. Five in your side's Diamond Palmer was in a contentious city council meeting where some residents spoke out against the project. She is live in Creve Core with the latest Diamond. Well, good evening, Kelly. The city says the construction of Olea Village could cost nearly $13 million in construction costs, and it has residents split over this development. Some are demanding more transparency from their city leaders before the voting happens at these city council meetings, and others are saying it's a good thing for the city's economy. Now, last night at the Creve Core City Council meeting, members voted unanimously 8 to 0 to amend bill number 6089. That means phase one of Olea Village located at 10,300 Olive Boulevard will move forward with construction. Crews will now start to clear and grade the site along with installing utilities and roadway construction. The bill also authorizes changing the zoning from office space to mixed use development for future restaurants, hotels and apartments. Residents brought up many concerns during this meeting and over the phone with me today, including a lack of concessions the city has made to residents concerns and some of those include concerns 
concerns about sewer and water service, increased traffic, and the projected revenue cost to the residents. It's completely unacceptable to allow a development to move forward without addressing the citizens' concerns, particularly those residents who live adjacent to the proposed development. You know, Creve Corps community belongs to these residents who have lived here long before this development and will live here long after this development is completed. I have reached out to the mayor and both developers for comment on this, and they have not yet responded. Reporting live here in Creve Corps, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side. A teacher at St. James High School is charged with child pornography and attempted rape. Ricky Laughlin is accused of sending pornographic material to a teenage student. Court documents say she also tried to invite the teen over to her home for sex. District leaders say when they learned about the allegations, Laughlin was immediately removed from the school and placed on leave. Today, people from across St. Louis packed a city hall hearing room to debate the unhoused Bill of Rights. Several people came to vent their frustrations about dangers facing homeless people as the cold weather approaches. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, reports one of the more controversial ideas is now off the table. He is live downtown tonight. Kelly, it was a PR lightning rod. Now it's gone. A new version of the unhoused Bill of Rights has emerged at City Hall today, scrapping that old language that would have allowed homeless people to relieve themselves anywhere in public without penalty. Uh, Alderman Michael Browning testified or uh, posed questions today, taking aim at the media for accurately reporting on the contents of that proposal. He blamed the press for telling the public what was in it. He said he didn't appreciate all the calls and emails he got from the public outcry that followed. Now these revised plans would set a 30 day timer for the city to step in and notify any tent encampment before clearing it out for eviction. And in those 30 days, the city would have to provide sanitation services like a toilet and mobile shower. One downtown business owner came to tell Alderman how this issue has already impacted his grocery storefront. There is a few particular um, unhoused or this problem, homeless people that, you know, come down there and one in particular, he literally just turned our storefront into a latrine. The public urination and defecation has been struck out of the beach. The proposal still faces stiff opposition, even from some progressive members on the board who are at the committee today. One idea would station police 24 seven at each of these new homeless tent camp sites, uh, police officers or police surveillance in some form. Board of Aldermen President Megan Green said, look, if the city doesn't do something to lower the barrier, get rid of the red tape to make it easier to open permanent shelters, you're going to keep seeing more of these tent sites pop up across the city in higher volume. More on those details tonight at 6. Live downtown, Mark Maxwell, 5 on your side. The city of Calverton Park is now facing a lawsuit claiming it illegally towed vehicles. The Art City Defenders Advocacy Group says the city towed vehicles from private property like homes and driveways. The lawsuit claims the city was targeting vehicles with expired or temporary tags and didn't give people notice. We've reached out to the mayor who said no comment. A Hamas hostage shares her story, how she was treated and where she was held the entire time. A House Speaker vote takes another turn for the worse and lawmakers say they're fed up with the process. And weather-wise, boy, another warm day. 77 for that high. We're at 76 now. Still a chance of rain off and on until the weekend when it becomes widespread and then much colder weather. We'll talk about all of this coming up.